welcome back so in this video we are going to study about colony morphology or colony characteristics for yeast how to report them okay so let's start with the video so first we know that that yeast they are unicellular organisms and they are considered as eukaryote okay and the colonies on the media plate are same like bacteria and that's the reason why some students they get confused about how to report the colony characteristics or colony morphology okay so before moving to that point let's revise about colony or colony formation so well we cannot see the bacterial or yeast cell by our naked eyes so we need microscope but we can observe them growing on our media plate so how so when a yeast cell it grows it cells grows and multiplies a million cells into a million cells it forms a colony and that is what we observe on our media plate okay so all the cells in a pure isolated colony they have same characteristics okay so say this is a yeast cell one yeast cell it starts multiplying okay so it will divide it will multiply it will keep on multiplying and it will form a pure mature colony okay so that is what we observe on our media plate after incubation okay so after getting uh, proper growth we start writing or we start reporting the colony characteristics so a colony is defined as a visible mass of microorganisms all originating from a single mother cell okay so a mass of microorganism is what is a colony and each and every cell will have same characteristics so we report the um, characteristics of a colony okay and what all is included so first is size then shape then margin then elevation then consistency or the texture uh, opacity color then gram staining and motility okay sometimes even appearance is one of the characteristic that is uh, reported okay so overall you can say there are 9 to 10 characteristics so let's start so first i want to make a point here that mostly the yeast cells they are non motile so in case of motility you will find nothing you write the, the or you report it as non motile in case of gram staining now gram staining is generally used for um, bacterial cultures right we distinguish them as gram positive and gram negative but in case of yeast we cannot differentiate depending on the cell wall okay the composition of cell wall but you can do gram staining and if you see gram positive if you get your results as gram positive it means that the yeast cell has intact cell okay intact the cell wall is intact okay and if you say negative result that is gram negative results if you are getting then that means that your cell yeast cells they are disrupted okay please make a point here that i am not discussing the cell wall composition i am just giving you the condition of the cell wall depending on which you get a gram positive and gram negative results in yeast culture okay so if the cell or uh, is of yeast is intact that means there is uh, the cell is live and the cell wall is intact then you will get gram positive results and if the cell wall is broken or disrupted then you get gram negative okay now alternative staining technique that is uh, known is augustine's uh, staining technique or you can do a simple monochrome staining you can only use one stain that is crystal violet or saffron okay to get uh, to do your microscopic observation so that was about motility and gram staining now about size the first uh, characteristic or morphology trait so size of a colony can be useful characteristic for identification now each and every yeast culture will show different size of colony formation okay so you have to report the size now the diameter of a re, uh, representative colony may be measured in millimeters or described in relative terms such as pinpoint small medium or large now colony is larger than about 5 mm or 5 mm they are likely to be motile organisms but that is the case in bacteria okay then comes the shape or form now the shape refers to the shape of the colony these forms represent the most common colony shapes you are likely to encounter that is circular irregular filamentous and rhizoid okay so this is how 
you have to observe the colony whether it has a circular shape or irregular shape or it looks filamentous depending on your observation you need to report the characteristic after shape you have to report the margin so the margin simply means the age of the colony okay so common examples of margins are entire so you have a smooth edge then you write it as entire irregular then undulate okay uh, undulate is like wavy then lobate means lobes curled and filiform okay wavy wave like structures are there too many waves are there okay so that is how you uh, report the undulate form of margin then lobate curled and filiform then comes the elevation so you can see this is how you need to observe you need to uh, place your you need to take your media plate to your eyesight and you need to have a side view you need to observe the side view of your colony okay so that is how you will get to know the elevation of your colony so this describes the side view of the colony these are the most common that is the flat then uh, flat then raised okay umbonate then convex pulvinated uh, that is not given in the uh, in the picture here okay so cushion shape is what is known as pulvinated okay so that is the elevation so you report the elevation then comes the consistency now several terms that may be appropriate for describing the texture or the consistency of uh, yeast growth they are like dry moist then viscid now viscid is uh, it is it is sticky it sticks to the loop but you cannot get rid of easily okay then brittle or uh, febrile that means very dry and it can break uh, easily and mucoid is sticky mucus like so sticky mucus like is what it looks like this very very sticky okay so you report it as mucoid mostly we get um, moist or say dry to mucoid type of consistency in yeast cultures now about the appearance appearance of the colony surface so bacterial colonies they are frequently dry okay and slightly very slightly you find them shiny okay so in case of mucoid type of uh, culture you will see the colony is having a shiny appearance okay so you will see that bacterial uh, colonies they are mostly shiny and smooth but in case of uh, yeast cultures um, rarely they are shiny and yes they are smooth but the appearance is dull okay they don't have a, they don't appear bright like the bacterial colonies they are dull in appearance and the other surface descriptions they might be as yes, dull opposite to the glistening then veined rough wrinkled that is shriveled and glistening okay so yes in case of uh, candida species i have a picture in my another uh, slide the appearance can be said wrinkled why why because the colony appears wrinkled okay so if you are adding appearance in your colony characteristics then you can report it likewise so this is a picture of rhododendron mucilaginosa which is a culture which is mucoid in consistency sticky in nature okay so and pigment producing so this is how it looks okay then about color or pigment so yes some yeast they produce pigments uh, when they are grown in medium so pink pigment produ production is seen in case of rhodotorilla glutinis okay so this is how the culture looks so this is a characteristic that is seen generally in yeast and uh, many yeast cultures they are used for uh, pigment production and extraction of pigment so yes they have applications also so after pigment comes the opacity of the colony so opacity is uh, whether light can pass through the colony or not so is the colony transparent that means clear opaque that means not transparent or clear translucent is almost clear but not directly transparent okay but distorted distorted vision like looking through a frosted glass is what you can describe the translucent okay so depending on the ability to pass light through a colony you report the opacity so this is the opaque culture that means the light cannot pass through this particular uh, east colony okay you cannot see the back side of the uh, media okay 
So now let's take an example here. So if you are given two known cultures of yeast and you want to differentiate between them, so what all you need to do? So first is you can uh, streak them on the media plate and you report the time of incubation till you get full matured uh, yeast colonies growing on your plate. Then you report the microscopy, that means the structure by doing the staining or say slide culture technique, even slide culture technique is done for yeast. Okay, do remember that. Then you depending on the media used. Now why media used? Because depending on the media used, you can see here, this is the best example I can give you. So these first three are the candida um, cultures. Okay, different three species. And the last one is Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Okay, the baker's yeast. So you can see depending on the media, that is uh, different media if you are using, the colony characteristics can differ. So this is how the culture can look like on different medias, okay? So you have to see on YPD media, how all the four cultures they look like on chrome agar media or high chrome agar media, they have different pigmentation. So even depending on the high chrome agar or chrome agar uh, cultures you can report you can differentiate between the yeast cultures okay and the last one is the spider media okay so even if you go uh, for say one culture for example now let's take the candida albicans here or the candida auris you can see the pigmentation even the colony morphology now this colony seems to be raised in the center okay now candida albicans on chrome agar seems to be having a wrinkled type of uh, colony okay the appearance is wrinkled okay even on the spider media the colony is wrinkled but you can see the appearance is um, it appears quite big the size has also changed and the center part is more wrinkled okay so that is how you need to study your culture okay so depending on the media that you are using depending on the time of incubation you can differentiate between the culture now some of the yeast cultures they sporulate okay so you can check whether the culture is uh, able to uh, sporulate or not depending on that you can differentiate your culture okay so what about unknown cultures so what you have to do so in case of unknown culture you cannot rely on the colony morphology itself because it is not reliable you need to do thorough studying okay so another point comes in the picture is biochemical test yes like we perform biochemical test for bacterial cultures even for yeast cultures we perform biochemical test okay so you need to do biochemical test for both known cultures for differentiating between known cultures and for unknown cultures as well now what to refer when you are trying to identify a culture yeast culture so the best book is the east by j lauder so this one i don't have access to this book now so i cannot uh, show you how the book is but um, yeah i have handled this i have studied this book uh, during my college time so it was available in our department and we had access to this book so we used this while we um, perform our um, isolation practical for the east okay isolation and identification of east in our masters okay so check whether your department has this book you have the access to this book or not and please try to uh, go through this book because you will get a good idea like how uh, Burgess manual of back determinative bacteriology right the Burgess manual is for bacteria we study the bacteriology so that is different from that of the yeast okay so there is a difference between the book and this book is really informative there are the uh, actual pictures actual uh, how a culture looks like okay all the photographs are there the description is given by chemical test information is given so everything is given in this book so do refer this book for your identification of yeast cultures okay so i guess it is available on amazon because i am not able to find it uh, in, or i don't have any link from internet because i tried searching it so you have to buy it from amazon it is available on amazon okay so yeah so this is the last slide so i'm trying here to give you uh, an idea about how two types of 
cultures you can differentiate okay so now both of these are candida but the species is different so this is candida albicans and this is candida uh, parapsilosis okay so you can see the one is having a clear circular entire margin having colony okay circular proper circular colony but the candida parapsilopsis is having irregular and wrinkled type of colony so how to write the colony characters so the size i cannot measure the size here so i have written uh, approximate size here so you can say see that candida albicans has uh, yeah now the one more point is while writing or while reporting the colony characters you have to consider a well isolated colony and it should be fully grown okay the colony which shows the maximum growth is one that you have to take into consideration for colony characteristics so these are the two uh, colonies which i am taking here in consideration for reporting the colony characters so you can see the size is say 4 mm and 3 mm then the shape is circular you can see the albicans candida albicans is circular in shape and the shape of candida parapsilosis is irregular now about the margin the margin of candida albicans is entire and margin of candida parapsilopsis is undulate okay then elevation elevation is raised and yes raised for the both the cultures then color now color is actually tricky part one can describe off white as cream okay or uh, you can just report is of report it as creamy or off white okay then the parasiropsis is white the opacity now both of these colonies they are opaque that means light cannot pass through these colonies okay now consistency now consistency is you uh, sterilize your loop okay wire loop and you try to pick up the small part of your colony that is how you check the consistency now the consistency of my both the cultures is moist okay they are not dry and they are not mucoid mucoid means they are not sticky but they are moist you can easily pick up the colony and you can uh, use it further for your experiment so that is how you check the consistency then gram staining so even gram staining i cannot perform so i am i am reporting it as gram positive because yes generally in doing while doing gram staining for yeast you get gram positive result if your cells are intact and motility as yeast cells they are non motile so i have reported non motile now the yes even you have to report the media that you have used okay because depending on different media that we can use for our cultures the colony characteristics they can differ so here both the cultures are on sd agar that is sabra dextrose agar so reporting the media and the incubation time can help you identify and help you remember which culture uh, took what time for getting full mature colony grown okay so depending on that you can differentiate your culture so i hope my video is helpful to you all so do like my videos do share my videos with your friends and do subscribe to my channel don't forget to give me a thumbs up and hit the bell icon so that you will get notification on each new video that i upload thank you